Hello everyone. The theme of this Gatekeeper Conference is Loving the Land and it set me thinking of how that evolved for me in this extraordinary year. Normally Peter and I are out and about pilgrimaging but that stopped abruptly and as with many people I began to really appreciate my home and surrounding landscape. My offering today will be a photo montage of my local landscape and how I kept alive the sense of pilgrimage and honouring nature and the sacred within myself. I shall now share the screen. So this is a photo of a dog rose that was near our home. I felt it was like me, a hopefully strong radiant inner core that manifests in somewhat ragged petals of experience and outer expression. And I ask you to bear with me as I walk through these petals of local pilgrimage, dance and meditation with the hope that some of my experiences in the landscape will have resonance with you and your experience and will inspire you to continue gatekeeper work. We're very fortunate to live in the countryside in North Oxfordshire, which is within the Cygnus constellation of the British Zodiac, which I'm pointing to now. As you can see, the purple swan Cygnus flies along the Milky Way. One story of the constellation is that it is Orpheus, the Dionysian who charmed nature with the music of his lyre. And after his death, he ascended into the heavens to become the swan with his lyre at his side. Cygnus is about creativity, the sounding of the creative word, the expression of the liberal arts and sciences. We've lived in this area for over 30 years now and have found a north-south, east-west cross of ley lines from the Royal Wright Stones to Kenilworth, with Brails Hill at its crossing point of the heart, and also its sister swan from Stratford-upon-Avon down to Banbury. And we live east of Brails on the way to Banbury. I took to walking a circular route from our home along an old pathway which originally led to the local grain mill. Here's the pathway which is lined by ash and oak trees. I found I was starting my walk by honouring the gatekeeper with the expression from Ben Seduno. Kindly luminous beings, guardian of this place, please grant me your hospitality and may love bless you. It's a way to connect with spirit of place and to start to listen to nature. It made my walk into a pilgrimage. You can see the three trees in the photograph who gradually reveal different roles and natures. The ash tree on the left was the guardian tree. The first of the oak trees on the right was a place of connection and prayer, whilst the one behind was my comforter. I found I would lean up against the trunk of the first oak and sense the total connectedness with living consciousness. The branches connected with the heaven world and the roots connected with the world wide web of tree consciousness through the earth, all with a sense of giving and receiving love. I felt totally connected with all levels and found it really easy to say the cosmic cross. This is an age old symbol of the earth, of balance, and also dynamic connection with nature. I'd then say my prayers or just be with the tree and listen. This is the very feminine oak tree, which allows me to hug her and receive healing balm. These trees are near the beginning of my walk and I then go through the fields, trying to keep a sense of awareness and alertness to my surroundings, planting footsteps of light and love hopefully, but mostly I found I was in and out of that consciousness, but it was wonderful to see the landscape through all the seasons, something I hadn't really appreciated in such depth before. There is this little stream which runs aside, alongside the side of the fields. 
I found myself singing a song that Alice and Andrew Clark created on their pilgrimages in England many years ago. Flow river flow from deep within the earth, fill us with your love, your blessings freely given. It did feel a place to bless and be blessed. David Spangler talks about the blessing fields. We are givers and receivers. Water holds memory and intent and so flows and blesses the land as it winds its way through the landscape. This little hawthorn tree unexpectedly announced that it was the guardian of the stream. There were two tall trees overlooking the stream, a sycamore and an ash, so I was a bit nonplussed, but after that always greeted him as the guardian. Here is the sycamore with its verdant growth. It reminded me of Hildegard von Bingen's sense of the greening power of the divine. Most honoured greening force, you who roots the sun, you who lights up in shining serenity within a wheel that earthly excellence fails to comprehend. You are enfolded in the weaving of divine mysteries. You redden like the dawn and you burn with the flame of the sun. Then the storms came, and both the sycamore and the ash fell. It was a shock to me. But the trees and the stream seemed to carry on in equanimity. It was as if the change of form was just part of the whole. It then made sense of what the little hawthorn had said to me. As I walk, I skirt around hills. This is Shenlow Hill, or Shining Hill which gives its name to the village of Shennington. It's part of a range of very old extinct volcanoes with names such as Eagle Hill, Rough Hill and Tyso Hill from the old Norse god Tai, the god of thunder. Our local church still strews hay in the nave in July from Thunder Field. Once we were visited by Martin Pratchup, a Mayan medicine man, and on seeing these hills, he immediately said, fire and water, this is very good for horses and geomancy. The fire coming from the volcanic activity and the water from all the water sources, as the hills are a watershed. The water on the east side flowing into the river Cherwell and through Oxford and the Isis to the Thames and London and beyond to Europe. And on the other side to the west, the water flows through tributaries to the River Avon in Stratford and thence to the River Severn and to the Atlantic and beyond. It is a truly beautiful landscape. Sometimes I meet Mike on my walk. His family has farmed this land for generations. He could point out who owned which fields and what was farmed, but he always talked of horses. They were always in this area. It's interesting that there was a red horse carved into Tyso Hill and that the land beyond to the southeast and towards Banbury is associated with horses. This carved horse only disappeared 80 years ago when trees were planted on top of it. The valley at the bottom of the hill is called Red Horse Vale as the soil is red. This is what greets you when you arrive in Banbury. Ride a cock horse to Banbury Cross to see a fine lady on a white horse with rings on her fingers and bells on her toes. She shall have music wherever she goes. The fine lady was Celia Fine, Lady Say and Seal of Broughton just outside Banbury. She was a lady ahead of her time who flouted the norm. It said she rode side saddle throughout England and rode a journal about her journeys. Banbury was a hotbed for rebellion and the local lords were the first to support the parliamentarians in the civil war. There was also a strong suffragette movement in Banbury. Horses are symbols of our thoughts and ideas. Now Banbury is a distribution centre with the likes of Amazon on its boundaries with the M40 maybe through pilgrimage and prayer, ideas of harmony and equality could be distributed as well as goods. 
The River Cherwell runs alongside the Oxford Canal, seen here. Both wind their way to London. The canal was an important way of bringing coal from the north to London and for sending the woolen goods of Banbury to Dover for export to Europe. I'm learning to love Banbury. I go shopping in either Banbury or Stratford, so I regularly travel along the A422, which is the swipe spine of the swan. Stratford-upon-Avon is famous for Shakespeare and his plays with the initiatory characters and themes. The symbol in Stratford is the swan, the playwright being the sweet swan of Avon. The Shakespeare plays have gone around the world, enthralling audiences for 400 years with wisdom within the plays. The heart note of the swan has found expression in the plays. This sculpture depicts two swans, the Hamsar or Gemini twins hatched from two swans eggs, symbolizing the mortal immortal, the male and female united. Again, the sense of honouring and blessing the water which flows through England to the Atlantic Ocean is very present. Many roses have been offered over the years. We've been exploring the town's chakra system with Trinity Church and the theatre, both with very vibrant, kindly, luminous beings. Pillerton Priors and Pillerton Hersey are on the crossing point of the two swans. In Celtic tradition, the swan is the familiar of Bridget, the bride, the goddess of the land, synonymous with grace and beauty. It's interesting that the chapel of Pilliton Priors is dedicated to Mary Magdalene and the church at Pilliton Hersey is dedicated to Mary the Virgin, the church's way of embracing the divine feminine. At Pilliton Priors, there's a beautiful oak tree on the site of the chapel, which burnt down in 1666 or seven, supposedly from a spark from the fire of London. The oak symbolizing strength and steadfastness. We come here and make mandalas and sing and offer roses, usually at solstices or equinoxes. The main trees at Pillet and Hersey, on the other hand, are the yew, symbolizing resurrection and eternity. In the past, we'd come and sing Taze at the winter solstice, traveling north from the center at Brails Hill up to Warwick along the north-south ley line, hopefully imbuing the line with more light and love, which feeds the landscape and uplifts the atmosphere of the area. My love of panurismi, a joyful meditational dance created by the Bulgarian mystic Benson Duno is another petal of the rose. Panurismi literally means supreme cosmic rhythm. The meditational dance connects music, gesture, and the intent behind the gesture, balancing heaven and earth, embodying the virtues of truth, love, wisdom, justice, and goodness. Duno envisioned the new golden age and created the panurismi as a way to help us move into the new era in as gentle and as harmonious a way as possible. The photograph in the right hand corner shows the dancers in the Rila Mountains in the August festival time, when before COVID, up to a thousand dancers gathered on the 19th of August to dance panurismi, sunbeams, and pentagram. Our efforts are less spectacular, but we enjoy them nevertheless. His philosophy links strongly to the Orphic mysteries and the sense of the divine within nature. I am in harmony with living nature. May the blessings of love flow through me. Bensaduno was very keen on affirmations. He said that if we make harmonious gestures through our bodies and our heart intent and thoughts, then the nature and angelic beings, the kindly luminous beings, respond and resonate with that energy, enhancing both ourselves and lifting the vibrations of the world. 
Over the years, we've danced at the Royal Wright Stones, a wonderful stone circle to explore. In landscape terms, it's at the Star Deneb in the tail of the North South Swan, a good geomantic place to add our prayer. Six of us, socially distanced, dance there for the autumn equinox. This is the gesture for Aum, the creative word linking heaven and earth. Over the road from the stones is the King's Stone. And from there, you can sing up the ley line to Brails Hill, seen here with the trees on top of the hill, beyond the Witchford Woods. Now the final petal, meditations linking with others. When we can't get out into the landscape or we want to link with those who are pilgrimaging, I often use a map as a kind of yantra or home for the spirit and use it as a focus for meditation. This is one for the link with the wheel of life in Scorpio. This one was for the midsummer solstice. We also use the map for a whole of the British Isles, hopefully offering something of beauty to our land. As White Eagle says, beauty is spiritual food, beauty of form, beauty in nature, in Mother Earth, beauty in colour, in movement, in music, in thought, in expression. All these aspects of beauty are so important by your concentration upon beauty in your surroundings, in yourself, in your thoughts, try to convey beauty into the lives of others around you. And I'd like to finish with a blessing from Ben Seduno, which is said at the end of the Panya with me. May the peace of love and the pure joy of love live in our hearts forever. Thank you.